Welcome to the Asian Madness Podcast. I'm your host, Jessica, and this podcast will be focusing on the continent of Asia, including true crime, urban legends, superstitions, mysteries, and maybe even some personal stories. If this is something you think you might enjoy, I encourage you to try out my podcast. Please note that I am new to the game, and I am still exploring editing and recording techniques. Thank you, and let the madness begin. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Asian Madness Podcast. For this episode, we will not be looking at true crime or anything that happened in real life for that matter. Instead, we will be exploring the world of Asian urban legends. Okay, so who likes urban legends and scary tales? We all know the tales of Bloody Mary and the Candyman. You go in the bathroom, turn off the lights, turn towards the mirror, repeat the names three to five times, and some variation of a scary person will approach you, either from the mirror or from behind you. Then there's the story of the child in bed who asks you to check under the bed for monsters. But once you bend down to check under the bed, you discover your child under the bed, telling you that there's a monster on his bed. Wow. Asia has an abundance of weird-ass stories, and I'm sure everyone's heard of at least one or two. And if not, then you must know that we have great horror films. For one thing, Japan is crazy creative and also very twisted. The Ring, The Grudge, If you don't know these movies, do not fret. I will dedicate an episode just to some of the best horror movies from Asia. So please don't Google anything yet. Do not ruin this podcast. For the next 20 minutes or so, I will be sharing with you some of the most popular urban legends from around Asia. I love everything horror and scary. So, I hope you all enjoy these stories. The first story is the story of the slip-mouthed woman. This urban legend originates from Japan, but there's a similar variation of it from Korea. Here's how it goes. You're walking alone at night. You suddenly hear footsteps coming up behind you. You turn around and you see a woman coming up behind you. She seems generally normal, except she's wearing a face mask. But that's not odd either. She might be sick, suffering from a cold or something. But instead of walking right past you, she comes up directly behind you, taps you on your shoulder, and asks you, Do you think I'm beautiful? Do you think I'm beautiful? Well, that would be an awkward question, especially from someone you just met. You have a few choices here. You can answer honestly. If you say no, she will take out a pair of scissors and stab you to death. If you say yes, she will pull off her mask, showing you her slit mouth from ear to ear. Think Joker from Batman. She will smile and ask, How about now? How about now? Nope. She stabs you with the scissors. Yes? Great. She slits your mouth to look just like hers. Honestly, you just can't win with this one. There's also nowhere to run, as she is rumored to appear in front of you wherever you go until you answer her question. So, the moral of the story? Do not walk alone at night on empty streets, especially in Japan. 
This urban legend was a very popular one. Japan even made a film out of this one. I will be posting pictures of this on social media, and you guys can go check it out. Next up, let's discuss creepy bathrooms and the ghosts that live in there. For some unknown reason, Asian school bathrooms can be an extremely creepy place. I've always hated going to the bathroom when I was in elementary school. I was always terrified to go in the stalls, to close the door behind me, and to lock it. Don't get me wrong, I value my privacy, but what if something happened when I was in there? The air was always cooler, the bathrooms were huge, and there was a lot of echo. Every little sound made you feel uneasy. Something else that added to this whole uneasy feeling was the fact that we did not have what you would consider the normal toilet. We had what was called the squat toilet. You feel very vulnerable squatting there with your underwear pulled down. And you start to wonder if something will appear beneath you or maybe from behind you. So here's a story of Hanako from the third bathroom stall. Another Japanese urban legend. Story has it that Hanako was an elementary school girl who was bullied by her peers. One day, the bullying was so bad, she had to go to the bathroom and lock herself in the third stall to hide from her bullies. When she stopped going to class, teachers noticed, so they went looking for her and eventually found her hiding in the bathroom stall. They knocked, they asked her to open the door, but she did not respond and she did not open the door. The teachers forced the door open and soon realized that the girl had killed herself. From then on, several schools began the summoning ritual of Hanako. If the third stall of a girl's bathroom had an out-of-order sign, it was a sign that something was up. Usually, a poor student will go on a dare and knock on the door of the third stall three times and ask, Hanako, are you there? There's usually a long, dead silence where people stop breathing for a while, afraid but full of anticipation. If Hanako is there, she will either open the door, grab you, and pull you in, or she will respond with, Yes, I'm here. She's not known to be entirely malicious. She will only kill certain kids, goes the rumor. And I assume if they were bullies or bad kids, they are the victims. So next time you visit Asia, remember, keep out of school bathrooms, especially the third stalls. I have heard countless stories involving ghosts appearing in school bathrooms. Some that sound totally terrifying and some that are kind of ridiculous, like the ghost that hands you toilet paper when you don't have any. Oh, and while we're still talking about ghosts living inside bathrooms and stalls and toilets, I will throw in uh, an extra urban legend also about that called the Red Cape, also originating from Japan. The story goes, If you're alone inside a restroom, you really should refrain from talking, because once you do talk, the ghost will know you're there. And when you're sitting on that toilet, the ghost will ask you, do you want red toilet paper or blue toilet paper? Yeah, I don't really know why we have to pick, and what happened to the usual white toilet paper anyway. If you answer red, the ghost will slash you until all your clothes turn red and blood is drained from your body. But, if you answer blue, the ghost will strangle you until your whole entire body turns blue. You cannot give another answer because the ghost will drag you to the underworld, and the only way is to decline any toilet paper. Somehow it only happens in girls' bathrooms. As a grown-ass woman, I kind of still don't like bathrooms. There were also a lot of films that were made based off this story, so if you're interested, you can go look online and you might just find one of the versions. 
Now let's move to Japan's friendly neighbor, South Korea. Do any of you guys have tripophobia? If you're not sure what that means, you're welcome to pause this podcast and go look it up. Now, seeing the images can really help determine if you have this phobia or not. Okay, so tripophobia is the fear of holes. I admit that I am terrified of holes, and I do not mean one hole. I mean multiple holes. This is why this specific urban legend grosses and scares the Legend goes, a young girl was very self-conscious of her looks. She's the type to try out any new cosmetic product or try any new routine to feel prettier. One day, she reads about a new trend called the sesame treatment, where you basically dump a lot of sesame seeds into your bathtub and you bathe in it. Once you're done, it will leave your skin silky and smooth. Sounds like magic, right? Sesame is easy to purchase, and it's cheap as well. She goes to the bathroom and does as instructed. A couple hours later, the girl's mother wonders about her daughter being in the bath for too long, so she knocks on the bathroom door and checks up on her. She's horrified at what she sees. The girl is sitting in the bathtub with tears streaming down her face. The sesame seeds have somehow lodged into the pores of her skin, and she was just sitting in the tub, picking out the seeds with a toothpick, one by one. Gross. I just can't. Goosebumps everywhere. Ugh. I will also be posting uh, photos, not of this treatment, since obviously this is an urban legend, but Korea has made a short film with this urban legend, so they have some pretty gross pictures, which I will be posting because I would love to terrify you guys and sharing is caring. The moral of this story? Please don't believe everything you read or hear, especially online. Okay, moving on. The next legend is the legend of the sliding nurse from Indonesia. This is new to me, so this should be interesting. During the late 1980s, a nurse from a public hospital was having an affair with a married doctor. During a night shift, she meets with her doctor lover, giving him news of her recent pregnancy. Being married with kids, this obviously was not cool for him. He told her this wasn't cool and that the best option for them was for her to get an abortion. Naturally, she refused, and they began to argue. During their argument, he kills her. I mean, this clearly wasn't his only option. Ugh. To hide his crimes, he broke both her legs and cut them off. I guess he was trying to make hiding her body easier and, well, more convenient so he buried different parts of her body in different places. It's said that the ghost of this nurse could be seen at nights, legless and sliding on the floor of the hospital with her palms, looking for her legs. This poor woman. Good thing I don't live in Indonesia. So the moral of the story? Don't cheat on your spouse. Seriously, people. Nothing good ever comes of that. If you're not happy, then talk about it. Get a divorce. I don't care. Just don't cheat on them. Seriously. Oh, and, um, obviously, don't go around killing people who don't agree with you. There are many ways to solve a problem that do not include killing a person. So keep that in mind. The last legend for today's episode is from Beijing, China. A young man was heading home late at night. It was around winter, so it was pretty damn cold. He saw that the last bus was scheduled to arrive around midnight, so he waited. Once the bus came, he boarded along with an older man. He noticed that the bus was quite empty, with only him, the older gentleman, 
and the driver on board. But it wasn't weird since it was already very late. The bus continued on its usual route and stopped to pick up two more passengers, a man and a woman. They boarded the bus and sat in the seats right behind the driver. A couple minutes later, the older man suddenly got up and began yelling at the young man. He accused him of stealing his wallet and demanded that he return it. The young man was very confused and pretty angry, but obviously he had to defend himself because he didn't do anything. The old man continued yelling angrily and said if the wallet wasn't returned, they would both have to get off immediately and head to the nearest police station to settle this matter once and for all. The young man was reluctant to go with this man, but eventually agreed to leave the bus to prove his innocence. Once they got off, the older man sighed a sigh of relief. He turned to the young man and said, Young man, I just saved your life. The young man was confused as hell, and the older man explained that the two people who got on the bus after them had no legs. In other words, they were ghosts. The older man noted that there was a gust of wind on board, and while it blew on the woman's skirt, it should have revealed her legs, but instead there was nothing underneath. The next day, news report from all over the nation began reporting that a bus and its bus driver was missing. Turns out, it was the same bus, bus number 375. There was a citywide search and the bus was finally discovered about 100 kilometers outside the city. Here's what's wrong with the whole scene. Inside the bus, they found the badly decomposed body of the bus driver. It was definitely not a one-day decomposed body, but a several days decomposed body. Mind you, it was winter. Bodies do not decompose that quickly. Second, instead of gas inside the tank, they found blood. There are many theories regarding this urban legend, so you are welcome to check out other versions and decide for yourself. Hopefully this never happens to me. Good thing I don't live in Beijing. Oh wait, I do! But that's okay. I never take the bus. So there you guys have it. Five weird and creepy urban legends from my side of the world. I will eventually do more, as there are plenty more for me to share with you all. Hopefully you like these, and if you would like to hear a specific tale, please feel free to email me and let me know. So on that note, if you liked what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Asian Madness Pod for more information and show notes. You can also email me at asianmadnesspod at gmail.com for any suggestions. I'm your host, Jessica, aka The Mad Asian. Till next time.